What's up guys, LL here, and I'm back for another video. This time around I'm recording Ash Ketchum Gamer vs. Solwyn. This video so, is going to be covering the series. The Ash Ketchum Gamer is using the same rain team he's been spamming all OLT. It's Tailglow, Rest Manaphy, Mega Sw Standard Mega Swamper with Super Power, uh, I believe Spec Surf Ash Greninja, and then just like Dual Hazards Pharaoh. Uh, you can have Solon's team, he picked a bit of like a just a standard balancey type of build. Uh, you can have this. Man, if he just goes in. And he's literally getting a good matchup every single time. Like, he just has to kill the Lottie. The Ocean Man, if he destroys him. Like, right here, you just go for Ice Punch if you're Ash. Like, Ice, stay in and. Oh my god, if you stay in, I've got new momentum. This, this guy only load rain. Literally the same six. Yeah, honestly, this team just has such a bad matchup against the rain. Like, what the hell, dude? Okay, yeah, so purchase attacks. Or he he's gonna go into Pharaoh and get him up, I'm assuming. Now he's just gonna stealth rock, yeah. I don't know why you do in like two turns. Like <laughs> Ah, this is such a just ooh. Ooh. Like Landers gets off a suicide default automatically against this. Unless you can somehow get into Pelipper and pivot out in the turns fall. Like they actually technically if you go Pelper immediately after this and then go hard into the swan actually you can just U-turn since it's Scarf zone, most likely. And that's exactly what Solon's thinking of. Like, if he goes Pelipper and U turns out, he gets all the momentum in the game. Like, instantly. Because he just throws out Waterfall with his Pert, and Waterfall into Ice Punch does KO Latios, which is, you know, problematic for him. Uh, other things in this game that are irritating, the Tornadus goes in because it's Taunt Hurricane fighting move, and yeah. So his, his best play is definitely just go into Pelipper and then either Hard Pert or U-Turn into Pert. I'd personally go Hard Pert just because it's a good way to scout to see if this is a unique Magna Zone set. Why are you dotting? <laughs> <Cook on. laughs> okay, so yeah, he goes hard into part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. 
So now Ash can is in a position where he gets his mega off and just starts firing off waterfalls because he wants to pressure that lander as much as possible to prevent it from removing his entry hazards. Because if that Landorus goes down, this matchup is basically done. Because Ash is going to have Spike support along with his Manaphy Pert and Grindcore that all obliterate this team. Mm -hmm. So, otherwise... Yeah, so... Soulwind really wants to get these hazards off. And Ash is thinking like, okay, looking at Solon's team, honestly, I think Scarf Sun makes so much more sense than Sub on this. Like, he gets dominated by Kartana. Like, he's gonna have to run Scarf Superpower Landers or something of that sort if he wants to be decent against Kartana. This team also gets abused by, uh, I mean, like, Dark in general. Like, Fish are just Struck. Okay, here's waterfalls. He goes for. See, now here, either you can earthquake on the pex. No, he's not going pex. Uh, yeah, I think waterfall is still your best play because he's not going pex when you've got a hurt out versus a magnezone. Like, it just doesn't make sense. The fact that I thought EQ might have been a valid play is enough proof there that Toxifex just is a horrible play here because Toxic Spikes are, are one of your only ways of consistently being able to pressure this team and you want to be able to set those up at some point. You should be able to set them up on the Gren or the Pellet Pressure so you can get Pex in versus them and if you can then this game is looking pretty great. That is another reason why I don't agree with going Magnazone against Pharaoh right away. Like, I would have gone Pex and traded T-Spikes for Spikes. Or something, like... I don't know, I just think that... Solon's put himself into very a very precarious situation here. Because his team just gets sent back by Swamper. And I don't know why you would ever load something this week to rain against someone who's used the same team every set so far this tournament. But now Swamper takes out the Magna Zone. Solon can he can I think Solon's play is just to go into his Lando and try to pivot around the hurt. Yeah. So he goes Lando and then pivots into Clef here, most likely. So if I'm Ash, I just double out to Greninja, because Solon's never just staying into U turn. This the horrible play. So Ash Gren covers the cleft pivot as well as whatever. But he just goes for Ice Punch, trying to fish for freeze. I suppose that is workable a little bit. Okay, and then he just throws out the Moon Blast as Manaphy's just gonna throw out a Surf is what it should do. Oh, it's Ice Beam. Oh, oh yeah, is, isn't this like Tailblow Ice Beam or something? I don't know. He might have... Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's Ice Beam over Rest in, on this. So... Yeah, looking at this... <laughs> Looking at this then, the Latios is very pressured because unless this is Draco Latios, Greninja is free here. And yeah, yeah, exactly. If it's Draco Latios, then he can put himself right back in a good position, but it is not. So if I'm Ash, you know, you can just throw out a Dark Pulse and, you know, that nabs the Tox effects. Because it's forced into a position where just one flinch can do it in. And it's going to have to pivot back out to T-Tar so you can throw out a D-Pulse on the peg switch and then go per for free. But then instead he just goes hard per, which I don't really agree with because you just let Clefable in now. And that's not very good for you because like Clefable comes in very easily. 
But, you know, I suppose, yeah, also Landorus, if it comes in on an EQ or whatever, can defog all your hazards, and then Solwind would be playing without hazards for the duration of the match, which is very bad, because then he won't be able, then Ash won't be able to punish the switches from Solwind, and Ash just goes for Ice Punch again, fishing for freeze. Solon's Lando's pretty free here, but he decides to just stay in and recut and soft boiled. I thought Lando was a pretty good pivot there just because you got your haz the hazards off. And Ice Punch is unlikely to happen. You do take Waterfall outside of rain just fine as well, so it's not like you're concerned about a Waterfall there. And he's just staying in and fishing for a crit basically. Like I don't know what else he could be doing here. Uh, what else? Okay, pivots to Tornadus finally. As Solon goes to Latios. So now he can taunt on the likely Roost and recover, yeah. And then now Hurricane just sends somebody packing unless Solon goes to Titar, which gets smacked by superpowers. So, well, this should be superpower, but... Okay, going into... I do not agree with going Landris on the Tornadus, because if that Hurricane connected, Landris was either dead or basically dead. But now, Solon can get these hazards off finally, and play the duration of the game without having to worry about them. So now he's in a pretty you know, solid position. He still has to worry about that 25% Swamper and the Mana Feed, seeing as it's Ice Beam. But, it's definitely a lot more even now than it was looking like five turns ago. Okay, and then Ash just U-turns to get, get up his ring with Pelipper. And he gets a free U-turn off here on the pivot to Tyranitaria. Yeah. That's what I expected. So now he can... Judging from that damage, it's some sort of bulky-ish stat, because I'm pretty sure it does 20 to max max T-Tar in terms of attacks, some other stat. So now your Swamper can just stay in, and I'd Waterfall here because the Lando sack and the Clef just makes sense from Solon's perspective because with hazards off there's not really much Landers can accomplish for you in this match. But otherwise I don't really like I suppose he could do some pivoting around with Toxapex and Lottie, but okay Lottie pivot isn't bad as Ash just ice punches on the switch which He's been going for Ice Punches pretty liberally all game, so that doesn't make sense. There was a great play by Ash, which puts him right back into position to win with Mana Fee. Because it's a tail below three attacks. Looking at the Landers, this is just a free Pelipper. Eh, not 100% free. Yeah, no, I think Tornadus is better here. Okay, and then, yeah, so yeah, Torn is a good pivot here. And if someone chooses to just go into T-Tar, uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure this is super power, so. If it isn't, no, actually it's Defog, yeah, yeah. I remember now, it's like some Defog knockoff. That, it could be, it's either super power or, no, 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 it's U-Turn in the last slot. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, no, it's Taunt, U-Turn, Defog, Hurricane, I think. I don't know, Ash has been ch changing up the sets ever so slightly a little bit throughout the tournament, so I'm not exactly sure what he's running in this particular game. Obviously, if it's super power, that's great here, because he just knocks out the Tyranitar. But he's not, so you can just U-Turn out, probably going into... Oh, he's just going into Pelipper. And taking the crunch, the 32% once again confirms it's a T-Tar. So now, 
Uh, you get a pretty free switch into the... the what? <clears throat> okay, he stays in, eats the rock slide, <laughs> and U turns out, so now he's got a super free pivot into Manaphy here. Or, Swampert. Uh, the thing about Swampert is that you can get predicted around here. So, yeah, he can either just throw out a waterfall or go hard for Earthquake predicting the Tox effect switching. Let's see what he does. He does go for the Earthquake predicting the Tox effects and Solon sees right through that. Now I would definitely, yeah. So the 21 indicates that the Earthquake does not KO Tox effects from 86. So what I would do if I were Ash is go directly into Manaphy here as this Toxic Pex is likely going to just throw out a Scald, set up Toxic Spikes, whatever. And now you get into a little bit of a Tail Glover's Haze contest because... Yeah, so you're just gonna you can probably like alternate between Tail Glover and Psychic with some sort of regularity. Or someone just goes for Scald here, which could be problematic because now Psychic knocks out the Toxapex and Mega Swampert and Greninja both appear to clean up this game. So this looks like a pretty wrapped up contest. I would just go into Pelipper here if I'm Ash. Like, okay, he does stay in a new turn, so I suppose Ash did make the read there. In retrospect, Manaphy really isn't all too valuable for him, and yeah, the game just ends there. Because now... Oh, Ash, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ash does win this game. Pretty handily. Either U-turn, yeah, U-turn, then that lets him... Then Manaphy can just come in and throw out a Z-Water here. That is the game. So Ash and Ketchum Gamer has won 1 0. Has won the first game of the set, make, uh, rising his record to 1 0. And now he is going to be. That now Soulwind is on the brink of elimination because both players have a 2 2 record, and this is Swiss. So whoever gets 3 wins moves on, and whoever gets 3 losses gets eliminated. So this game is an elimination game for Solon. 